Hi everybody, Mr. Wyatt here again, and uh, it is time for us to move into section four of topic nine. And we're looking at box and whisker plots today. First of all, though, I want you to notice I have a different tie on here today. That today I decided to go with my light blue tie. And um, I'm wearing this tie, of course, because you know what? You matter to me, and you're very special. Okay, and I've been trying to decide of all the ties I've worn through this chapter, through this topic, which one do I like the best? And you know what? I can't really decide which one I like the best. You want to know why? Because it's a tie. Oh, that's, I'm, I'm sorry, dad joke. All right, we better move on with the lesson here. All right, so um, we're talking about box and whisker plots today. And when you're dealing with sets of data, there are lots of ways you can organize the information um, graphically in order to um, analyze the data. And we've looked at, talked about circle graphs as far as just estimating what part of the whole each section represents. We looked at line plots also, which end up looking a lot like bar graphs. And today we're just looking at another way that we can organize data graphically. Box and whisker plots. Now, it's a fun name, you know, I mean, whiskers, we think of our favorite cat or our favorite dog, you know. Um, but a box and whisker plot, it's a graph that is separating data into four parts. And those four parts are called quartiles. See the root word there, quart means four, doesn't it? And to separate the data into four parts, we'll be using the median and uh, we'll be using the median repeatedly to split it into um, four parts. <coughs> now you may remember median is pretty easy to find in a data set. Uh, so this should be pretty easy today, making a box and whisker plot. So let's, let's talk a little bit more here about this. Um, let's say I have the high temperatures for the first 14 days, one February. All right, here they are. February 1st was 25 degrees for a high. February 2nd was 24. February 3rd, 32 degrees. Oh my goodness, how nice. And so on and so forth for the first 14 days in February. Now, I wanna make a box and whisker plot here. And so I wanna find the median of the entire set of data. So the first thing I need to do is put all these numbers in order from least to greatest. Instead of having them listed chronologically, meaning in order of time, I'm going to list them in order um, from lowest to highest temperature. And so I have done that right here. I've taken, let's see, we have 14 temperatures for the first 14 days in February. I've listed all 14 numbers across here from least 24 degrees to greatest 36 degrees for the high temperatures. And now what I wanna do is find the median of this entire data set. If there are 14 numbers and I want to cut it in half, what's half of 14? Seven. So I am going to count seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to put a line here, right here. And now I have seven temperatures listed here and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven temperatures listed over here. The Median of this entire data set is 30 degrees. That's the median temperature over that 14 day span. And then what I wanna do is I wanna cut each of these halves in half. If I have seven numbers over here or seven temperatures, um, there will actually be one of these numbers right smack dab in the middle. This one right here is smack dab in the middle of this section to the left of this line. We have three to the left, three to the right of this 27 in this section over here. And I can find the median of the upper half of the data too in the same way. We have seven numbers there, so my median must be 32 because now I have three to the left of it and three to the right of it in that upper half of the data set, okay? And a box and whisker plot would look like this here. My box would extend from the 27 here. I can kind of draw this here. Oops, stay there, buddy. I could kind of draw it in like this. This is sloppy, but the box would look like this. And that's what you see down here is my box. And the whiskers extend out to the low and high temperatures. Whoop, whoop. 
course, I don't want to write on the numbers. I would put my um, box and whisk whisker plot either right above my numbers or right below them. Now, one more thing I want to mention to you. You see what I did here is I showed every other number, 24, 26, 28, 30, and so on. I, I was just being lazy. I could have shown the 25 here and the 27 here and the 29 here uh, and so on. I was just being lazy when I made this box and whisker plot. But that's what you do. You find the median of the entire data set. Then you find the median of the lower half of the data set. And then the median of the upper half of the data set. And you end up with your box and whisker plot. Okay, and I'm going to erase this because it looks terrible right now. Very messy. All right. Now, if you want to look a little closer at this, these different, what, what's happened here is I've split the data into four parts. One part right here represented by this whisker. A second part here. A third part here. And a fourth part here represented by this whisker. So one-fourth of the data is right here. One-fourth of the temperatures are right here, or 25%, right? And I have 25% of the data here, 25% of the data here, 25% of the data here. That's 100% of the data altogether, okay? Notice these different parts aren't all the same size. Like this whisker is much longer than this section here. Okay, this section here is bigger than this section, but smaller than this section. These two sections look about the same size. And we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. But first, what about some terms? Let's talk some terms here. We've divided the data into quartiles. Quart means four. We split it into four sections. All right, the very first value we find is the median of the entire data set right here, and that's called the second quartile. So the first thing we find is the second quartile. Why don't we start by finding the first? Well, you'll see why here shortly. That's the second quartile, which is the median of the entire data set. Then find the median of the lower half of the data set. That value is called the first quartile. Then find the median of the upper half of the data. That is called your third quartile. Now, quartile, I thought, meant four. If there are three of these, then why are we calling them quartiles when quart means four? Well, because those three medians that we found are splitting the data into four distinct sections. Okay? And we have 25% of the data here, 25% here, 25% here, 25% here. Okay, so we have the second quartile, which is the median of the entire data set. First quartile, which is the median of the lower half. Third quartile, which is the median of the upper half of the data. This 24 right here is known as the lower extreme. And the 36 over here is known as the upper extreme in this data set. So these are the terms we need to know. First quartile, second quartile, third quartile, lower extreme, upper extreme, along with knowing that these here are known as your whiskers, and then this here is your box. Okay, a box, whiskers, second quartile, first quartile, third quartile, lower extreme, upper extreme. And if you had an outlier in this data set, it would make that whisker much longer, okay? So if you ever see a box and whisker plot and there happens to be one of the whiskers that's really super long, that's a good indicator that you have an outlier in your data set that is really stretching that whisker far, farther than it should be stretched. Okay, so let's make a box and whisker plot from this given data set. Let's say these are a bunch of test scores. Let's say we had a 100 point test. And these are the results. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We have 15 numbers in this data set. I want to list these from least 
to greatest. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing I've done in previous lessons. I'll list these from, um, I'll cross them off as I go and line them up with my original list. What's my lowest score here? I see a 42. Next lowest score, I don't see any more 40s. There is a 58 here. I'll write that directly below the 96. Uh, next would be our 60s. It looks like we have 63. 70s, we have 78, 76, 73, 75, 76. So 73, 75, 76, 76, 78. Boy, I better write that down fast before I forget. What I had, 73, 75, 76, 76, 78. In the 80s, we have 82, 88, 84. So 82, 84, 88. Just trying to get them all in order here. And then we have 92, 95, 96. And I need one more number, 100. All right, I have 15 scores here, 15 numbers in this data set. So I need to find the second quartile, which is the median of this entire set of numbers. Since there are 15 here, I want to find a number that has 7 to the left, 7 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Woo, this 78 has 7 to the left of it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 7 to the right of it. So my median is 78. That's the second quartile. See how easy that is? Just find the median of the entire data set. Now let's find the median of the lower half. That's all these numbers here that are not circled here. That's my second quartile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers there. Wouldn't the median of the lower half have three to the left and three to the right of it? So let's count three to the left. So I'll circle this one. Has three to the right of it in that section. This is my first quartile. Okay. And then I'll do the same thing with the other upper half of the data. Seven numbers here. So this 92 has three to its left and three to its right. So that's my third quartile. And, and of course, 42 would be my lower extreme. 100 would be my upper extreme. All right, so now when I'm making my box and whisker plot, I would strongly encourage you to use a ruler. Any kind of a straight edge would be fine, but you want these to look nice, okay? I don't want these to be freehand and all messy, all right? We're better than that. We don't need to make them all mess, messy like that. So what I have here is my box is going to be from the first quartile to the third quartile. So from 73 up to 92. So I'm just going to kind of, um, here's halfway between 70 and 80 is 75. So 73 might be about here. Up to 92, which is probably about right there. Does that look pretty good? Is that pretty good for the location of my box? Pretty close. I might have gone a little too far past the 90, but we're going to call it good right now because of time. And then my second quartile is at 78. So I'll draw that in here, right about here. Boop. Come on, you. Boop. There we go. And then the whiskers extend down to the lower extreme, 42. No, you stay there. To the lower extreme, 42. Boop. And to the upper extreme, 100. Boop. And then I'll put a couple of points in here here and here. That's how you make a box and whisker plot. All right, I don't have much more time here, but look how long this whisker is over here. That's because 42 is an outlier. It's really a lot lower than the other scores on this test. Okay, hope that helps. I'll see you later.